So our first speaker today is um, Dr. Bushra Nazir. Um, she's a research fellow at the Rural Clinical School Faculty of Medicine, the University of Queensland. She is committed to implementing the successful initiation and completion and completion of a range of exciting epidemiological and clinical research projects designed to improve the health of rural Australians by conducting clinical and scientific research in collaboration with academic and clinical staff associated with the rural, rural clinical school. And when I get the mouse going... Her presentation today is Indigenous Network Suicide Intervention Skills Training, um, a co-designing a suicide intervention training program with Indigenous communities. Please welcome her. Thank you, Margie. Uh, good morning, everyone. Firstly, I'd also like to acknowledge and pay my respect to the traditional custodians of where we meet today and elders past, present, and future. I'd also like to acknowledge anyone with lived experience in the room. So, as Margie said, I'm from a small team at the Royal Clinical School, University of Queensland in Toowoomba. And one of the projects that I'm working on uh, is uh, developing a culturally appropriate suicide intervention training program targeted for Indigenous youth. Today I'll talk about this training program and how we developed it in partnership with Indigenous communities and now in the process of delivering it. So we know that while Australia has one of the highest life expectancies in the world, the 3.5% of the population that identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders face a life expectancy that is not comparable to first world standards. Almost 95% of Indigenous Australians are affected by suicide, with reported rates twice those of the broader community. Importantly, suicide is a leading cause of death among 5 to 17-year-old Indigenous children. In the past 12 weeks, there have been 38 deaths reported. Three of them were children less than 12 years old who were Aboriginal. Despite these alarming statistics at present, there are no gold standard suicide intervention training models that are specifically designed for Indigenous people. So in 2016, we received funding from the National Health and Medical Research Council to develop an Indigenous suicide intervention training program. The application came about as a result of many years of community engagement with Indigenous people, leaders and experts by our lead investigator, Associate Professor Marie Toombs. One of the main things that kept on continuously emerging from her engagement was the need for more research into mental health and suicide intervention and prevention. So our research program has been structured such that we wanted to work with the community and for the community. And this way, we could develop a program that actually best suited the needs of these communities. The whole idea of our program is to train community members, those who may be the first people to come across someone who may be at risk in the community and thinking of suicide. Identifying someone at risk and then having the skills to do an intervention is very different to just training that increases awareness. There are lots of good programs that develop suicide awareness, but close to no culturally appropriate programs that provide intervention training specifically for Indigenous people. Our project was designed so that we had maximum community involvement to ensure its long-term effectiveness. Our main aims of the research were to develop an intervention program that will increase the knowledge, connectedness and confidence to intervene for our participants. Our main focus was to implement a bottoms-up approach to the training, where the program itself is co-designed with Indigenous community members to ensure that it works and that there is uptake of the training. So our project had three phases. The first phase was to perform extensive consultations with communities. We spent about 18 months yarning in communities across very diverse and wide regional areas, places like Charleville and Kanamala, down to Sherberg and Tumala and Bogabilla. We initially spent time getting to know these communities and talking with them to identify things that they thought would be beneficial in developing an effective suicide intervention program. And one of the things we learned from our yarning was how important it was to have some type of training that actually met the needs of our regional and remote Indigenous communities. 
We know that our frontline service providers and first responders are already overburdened in these areas. We know that regional and remote areas face various levels of service and workforce issues. And we know that professional help is not always readily available. So it was important to develop a training program that is able to train people, like the aunts and uncles living down the street, elders within these communities, parents, teachers, and sports leaders, anyone who is in daily contact with our young people, so that when someone is thinking of suicide, these trained people are there to identify the risk and intervene if necessary. So using this co-designed approach, we developed the INSYS program. Over two years, in very close collaboration with community members, service providers, education experts and mentors, as well as drawing on existing models and previous research. So another thing that we identified during our consultations was how people kept on mentioning the ASSIST program. ASSIST stands for Applied Suicide Intervention Skills Training Program, which is delivered by Living Works. ASSIST is known as gold standard for suicide intervention training globally. The program framework itself is quite good, it's very intuitive, but a lot of the skills that the training program provides depends on appropriate trainers delivering the training and the effective use of resources that are used. So we then spent time doing the training ourselves and understanding the framework behind it. And in doing so, we thought, instead of developing something completely new, why not develop a program that will give participants the same knowledge and skills they need to undertake an intervention, but with culturally appropriate resources and tools to support their learning and comprehension of the ASSIST framework. The resulting program called INSYST that we've developed focuses on cultural importance and empowerment for Indigenous communities. The training provides participants with the necessary skills and knowledge to apply a suicide intervention model. The framework behind the intervention model provides caregivers the awareness to recognize when someone may be at risk of suicide, skills to connect with them and to understand and clarify that risk, and steps to keep that person safe for a specific period of time. It then provides them with resources or connections required for further help. The training is delivered across a two and a half day workshop during which knowledge and practice of the model is interactively developed. So to date, we have 10 Aboriginal trainers who have been trained to deliver the training workshops for us. Another five who will be uh, becoming trainers by the end of this month. We've trained around 130 people over the past 12 months and we had uh, funding to train 100, so we've exceeded our initial goals. But the uptake of this training has been immense, and now we are being funded by various other organisations like Primary Health Networks, Aboriginal Med Medical Services, and other community organisations to continue to deliver these workshops this year and into the future as well. The Living Works organisation is based on a social enterprise model, where our Aboriginal trainers are able to take the training, conduct their own workshops beyond our research program as well. Living Works have been huge supporters of our program and we are working very hard with them to have INSYST available through their platform as a world first Indigenous suicide intervention training program. So one of the things we are going to use to evaluate the effectiveness of our program is a level of connectedness for our participants. A key issue that was identified during our consultations was, a, was that of access to appropriate care at the right time. We found that often those that need help don't seek help themselves. And this is because of many reasons. There is a reluctance to engage with services, a lack of integration and collaboration between and within services, and a lack of information and communication between people in these communities. So this told us that understanding how communities and people interact with each other is really important. Identifying the process of how social structures work or analyzing social networks and how individual people within these structures interact with each other and communicate is quite useful to know to determine the acceptance, acceptance and effectiveness of our training program to see if it has increased connectedness over time. The INSYS training model is based on indigenous cultural values and family and community structures. The holistic approach to well-being that is grounded in culture and identity are central towards perceptions of mental health and well-being and strongly resonate with not just the well-being of an individual, but the well-being of the community as a whole. 
These indigenous concepts of well-being have been acknowledged as protective factors that build resilience and influence mental health. Our findings will underpin future research for the development of proactive prevention strategies that solely rely on these concepts, thus honouring Indigenous strengths leading to meaningful change and evidence-based solutions. So we hope to provide strong evidence on the value and sustainability of INSIST into the future, as more people undertake our training and we track their levels of connectedness with each other. At the end, I'd really like to acknowledge all our community members who have supported our research and allowed it to happen, and who are the real reason why INSIST is progressing as it is. Thank you.